Hey what's up guys, my name is The Cherno, welcome back to my Game Engine series. So last time we continued on with the dock space, we talked about frame buffers and all of that stuff, definitely check out that video if you haven't already, and today I thought we would have a nice, fairly quick, hopefully, chill episode in which we take a look at what it takes to actually set up a new project in Hazel. Now this is something that, uh, when I say that, I specifically am just talking about like development-wise within Visual Studio. So this isn't like a, how to make a new game or a new app using Hazel, because obviously once we have like a whole tool chain and a set of tools for Hazel, it will be done kind of there. I'm just talking about more or less like we have this sandbox project now. If we want to kind of programmatically in a C++ fashion add a new project to Hazel that uses Hazel, such as a level editor, which is what we're going to be doing here today, uh, how would we do that? Because a few, a few people have actually asked me what that would look like, but also it's going to be really important for us because at the moment we're kind of building our editor within Sandbox and that's not something that we want to continue doing. It's probably a good thing to move that out of there as fast as possible and leave Sandbox being our kind of test runtime environment. So if we pop over to Visual Studio, um, let's start off with, uh, first of all, talking about what we want to do. So you can see in the Solution Explorer, we've got a bunch of dependencies, we've got Hazel and we've got Sandbox. So what I want to do is create something else called the Hazel Editor. Now in the development branch, it's called Hazelnut. I don't know if I am 100% sold on that name. I think it might be better to kind of keep it more or less simple, maybe just call it Hazel Editor. If you guys have any suggestions, then um, leave a comment below uh, as to if you like the name Hazelnut, if you think Hazel Editor is better. Normally in Visual Studio, we just go right click, add new project and set all that stuff up, but we can actually do it a different way. In fact, we should do it a different way when working with Hazel and that is through Premake. So if we open up the Premake file, there's this Premake5.lua at the root of the repository. I'll just drag this into Visual Studio just to open it in uh, the text editor. You can use any text editor, obviously, since I've got Visual Studio open. I'm just gonna use that. Um, you can see that we've got our Hazel project and over here we have our Sandbox project. Now the Sandbox project is basically what we want to use as like a starting template because, Hazel, because Sandbox is a console app that obviously links to Hazel. So if we look at what it's kind of made up of, we've got the kind of target directory and object directory. These are like intermediate directories. They're pretty much the same as they are in Hazel. And then we've got a list of files, which is just, again, you can see it's fairly generic. It's just project name and then slash source. Um, so if we know that uh, Hazelnut, or I keep saying Hazelnut, Hazel editor is, is going to use um, this kind of same pattern here where we have like, you know, Hazel editor, which is the project name, and then slash source, and then in there, all of our source files exist, then you can use this, obviously, otherwise, you'll, if, if you don't have a source directory, you can get rid of it, and you guys get the drill. Include directories, these are all kind of things that need to be in, an, in a Hazel app at the moment. So basically, vendor, we use Hazel source, uh, we use so that we can actually use like the Hazel include directories and stuff like that. Um, and then Hazel vendor, SPD log include as well, because uh, like speed log is something that um, obviously, you know, we want to be able to also use inside applications that use Hazel, not just in Hazel's core itself, and therefore it needs to be exposed. It just links Hazel because Hazel actually links everything else. So that's kind of easy. And then we have um, a few different things here, primarily for Windows, we just use system version latest. This will have a few different like platform specific things as well as configuration specific things. But for now it's fairly, fairly standard. So to make this happen, let's copy and paste Sandbox. Uh, one other thing you could do technically is also uh, move this into its own kind of pre-make Lua file, and then you can actually include it. Now there's, um, there's I think it include, is it external or something like that? Yep, so something called include external actually will, uh, essentially include the script, but I think that this, you can include script which may contain one or more project or rule definitions. And all such containers will be marked as external and simply referenced, but not regenerated. Because every time you include it, it actually tends to regenerate a project. But if you just do include external instead of include, it's not actually gonna run the Lewis script, it's just gonna include the project. So this is something that you can do because like in some situations you might want to include things multiple times because you have multiple solutions that you're potentially generating, but you don't wanna regenerate the entire project again and again and again because that's not gonna be useful at all. So that's something that you can do as well. 
We're not gonna bother with that here. I'll just, because this is like, to me, this is still core Hazel. In fact, if anything, Sandbox should be standalone, but the Hazel editor should probably be inside the Hazel uh, solution as well. So anyway, scrolling down here to, so this is the second Sandbox and that's the first Sandbox. We're just gonna call this Hazel-Editor and location is going to be Hazel-Editor, which means that that's the folder that we have. It's gonna be a console app, C++, C++ 17, static runtime on, the target directory and object directory stays the same. The files, we're gonna use the same structure here. This stays the same, links Hazel, everything's the same. Literally the only thing we've changed is the actual name and that's it. So now if we run premake, I'm not sure anything will happen because we don't actually have that directory set up, but if we try to make this happen, um, okay, no, it, it does everything. It creates the directory for us and it's made a VCX proj for us, which is great. So inside here, I wanna make a source directory and then I wanna put all of my source code into this. So again, as a starting point, I'm gonna go back here to sandbox and I'm going to grab what I want from sandbox. So at the moment, I mean, we're basically using the entirety of sandbox. We don't need an example layer, but let's take sandbox app and sandbox 2D. So I'll copy that and I'll paste it over here. And instead of sandbox app, I'll call this hazel editor app. That's kind of like our application, I guess. And then we'll just have editor layer and that'll be our kind of default layer for the Hazel editor. So now if I go back here to scripts and regenerate the project, go back to Visual Studio, hit reload, you'll see that I should have a Hazel editor over here and we could make like a folder called tools or something like that. Um, if you look at the pre-make file, which is actually here, you'll see that we have this dependencies folder. It's like a solution folder or a filter. And the way that that's, that's achieved is just by having a group here. So we have like a group dependencies. And then under, the, under that, we have certain projects. And you can see actually the include external include thing um, is happening here. Because it's not included more than once, we're just using include because you have to run include the first time, but then include external the second time. I think I have an OpenGL related video that actually talks a little bit more about that. So if you're interested in having pre-make files and organizing your kind of, uh, I guess, solution or project better by having external pre-make files that you then include here so that it's not all cluttered, then um, I'll have the video linked up there, which talks a, a little bit more about how you can organize yourself with pre-make a bit better. And again, that's just not a decision I'm making right now to have this all external. I'm just gonna keep it here for now. And if, if this gets huge, then I will kind of refactor it and move it out. Okay, but that, that's really all we need from Premake. If we go over here, the other thing we could do, by the way, while I'm here is just the start project, we could change to Hazel Editor. Um, at the moment, I'll leave it as Sandbox deliberately because Hazel Editor is very much in development. Ha Sandbox at least has a like a test running and we'll actually fix up Sandbox today as well so that it doesn't have any of the doc space stuff and it just kind of has that, that original test that we had. So if we go to, um, if we go to Hazel Editor, I'm gonna mark that as the, as the startup project. And then I'm gonna start refactoring a few of these things. So Sandbox 2D doesn't exist here. It's called Editor Layer. We'll have, um, we'll say uh, Hazel Editor, which is a, um, the difference here as well is this, well, everything here is gonna be inside the Hazel namespace because it's part of Hazel. And that's kind of nice because we don't need to use this everywhere. So the Hazel Editor is going to push a layer here. Um, and that's going to be, I, I think I might want to revisit this stuff in the future, because I'm not sure if I still like the way that this is set up, but um, like, you know, with, with these things, we'll, 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 we'll talk about that a different day. And then this will return new Hazel editor. Okay, so this is kind of the basic setup. We've just refactored it so that it's not sandbox, but it's, you know, Hazel editor. Um, now this is supposed to push the editor layer, which is called sandbox 2D. So again, I'll just rename this to be editor layer. We'll remove Hazel from here and wrap this in the Hazel namespace. All right. Um, and again, our goal right now is just to recreate what we had in the last episode. So we're gonna leave everything intact. We're just changing it to editor layer. And I will also fix up a lot of these things. We're not gonna have this stuff here realistically. I hope that what we were using, by the way, I might be fairly stupid here, but I, <laughs> I I hope that what we were using was Sandbox 2D and not Example Layer. Okay, good. Because otherwise I would have taken the wrong layer and it might've been broken and that would not have been a good time. Okay, um, no Hazels here. There's a few more left. I'll get rid of those. And that looks pretty good. Um, let's go to the CPP file. We'll change this to be Editor Layer. We probably, like we might want a pre-compiled header as well in the future, but I won't do that today. Um, 
And then we have, so Sandbox 2D, I'm just gonna do a final place, Sandbox 2D to editor layer in the current document, Alt-A to do all of that at once, done. Um, that's it, I think. Everything looks like it compiles. Let's compile Hazel Editor, make sure everything compiles and links successfully while I have some coffee. Beautiful, let's run it. Okay, a little bit of a crash, probably because of assets not existing, if I had to guess, open gel shader. That's also something we should probably test against, things like missing assets. Let's grab the sandbox assets, paste them into Hazel Editor and run that again. Okay, we're all good and we're basically where we were last time, but now this is the Hazel Editor. And in fact, I don't know if there's a way to rename it from Hazel Engine to like something else, because I think the application, we do window create, and I think the default window prop says that it's Hazel Engine. So I think we can, if we, how about we do this as well? Um, I think to make this happen, to like as in to give it a name, we can create a window with window props, um, but application at the moment is what's blocking us because application, we don't have an application name. So as a little quick thing for now, we'll say name, right? Because it's pretty reasonable when you're creating your application, you should be able to give it some name. And then what this will do, all that this will do really is um, it, uh, by default, I won't require a name, but what I will say is that if a name has been given, um, I don't know if I actually want to have a different application, maybe just Hazel Engine or maybe even Hazel App can be a default name. Um, I don't like to have too many defaults going on and unfortunately we kind of have this default title and then we have Hazel App and it's kind of all over the place. But anyway, um, let's go back here and then to create that window props, and I know I keep jumping back and forth, and for that I apologize. So we need title. Let's get rid of these unsigned ints. I don't use that. Whoa, typing in Russian accidentally, as usual. Um, uint 32t will keep, uh, and then, and by keep, I really mean change. We'll change this to uint 32ts, because that's basically what we use everywhere now. Um, I'm not a big fan of UN unsigned ints anymore. Uh, 1280 by 720 and title is Hazel Engine and we have a default width and height. So technically we can just probably say we want window props name. That should work. Okay. And now if I run this again, but we go to Hazel editor app and when we actually make this application, we actually say application and then we give it a name such as Hazel editor. We can now give our application a name. We should also be able to give it a width and height and all that stuff, but like initializing an application and setting it up is, is a little bit more involved than just like passing in some integers that are the width and the height of the app. Like that's something that you do if you're just making a little sandbox or a little test. But if you've, you know, if you've got a whole engine, you know, you don't have like a constructor that takes in a width and a height for your game. That's a bit weird because it's dependent on a lot of, on a lot of things. It's not, usually it's not programmed in. Um, you can definitely have like a default width and height, but a lot of that's dependent on properties. A lot of it's dependent on how you left it last. So in other words, if you use the editor and then you maximized it and then you closed it, you probably expect it to come back maximized, not at the same size every single time. So there's a few things to consider there as well. Um, that's largely it. If we go back to sandbox, the other thing I, I said that I wanted to do was actually just basically get rid of the docking here and you know revert it to not be a doc space. So if I get rid of all of this, um, and, and is that it? Oh, we have frame buffers. I'll get rid of the frame buffer because we don't need that inside sandbox, at least not at the moment. Sandbox is going to become our runtime test. So the idea is we create a game with Hazel editor, which will basically create a whole bunch of game data. And then Sandbox is gonna be the application that loads that game data in and also might have a bunch of other CVP files that do certain things if you want to do that. And that's gonna that's gonna be the runtime. So Sandbox is like our game test, but Hazel Editor is like the actual, like it's, actual, it's an actual Hazel tool that you use to build applications or games. So that's the deal with those two things. Um, I think that's 
think that's it. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we won't create the frame buffer, obviously. Let's switch to this project and run it. I just have a little custom shortcut, Control Shift P. It, whatever file you have there, it if you hit Control Shift P, it makes that. Oh, we still got this. It makes that the um, startup project. Okay, so let's get rid of that maybe. So we have our checkerboard texture. Let's get rid of that. And the big, the big like panel is just. It's because we left it large last time. Okay, that's it. So we're back. We're back. We've got all of our functionality back. So now if I go back to Hazel Editor app, Control Shift P and F5, then we have Hazel Editor. And this is like our editor where we have our doc space. And I think everything is working pretty well. So what we're going to do next time is actually talk about getting the I am GUI panel to be um, we're going to make a new I'm GUI panel, which is going to be our viewport. And that's whatever size that panel is, that's the, that's going to be the size of this thing. We also have to fix things like scrolling because my scroll wheel doesn't work right now, even though WASD actually does. Um, and I'm not, I'm also, it kind of looks flipped to me. So I just realized that because WASD is making it go. So if, if you want to flip it back, what on earth am I doing? Edit a layer. So. I'm not sure why exactly it's flipped, probably because zero, 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 like zero on the Y axis is probably the top in I'm GUI, whereas in, um, you know, in OpenGL it's the bottom. So I think the, these UVs are just a little bit messed up. So the way that we can fix that, so we've got UV zero, UV one. Okay, zero and one. So that's just the min and max. So what we can do is change this so that our min, instead of being zero, zero, is zero, one, and our max is uh, one is zero instead of one, one. And that will basically flip the image because we're just changing the actual Y coordinates. And this is just canceling diagnostic session. Thank you, Visual Studio. I should probably switch to like Vim or something. Now the whole thing's not responding. Come on, man, just run my program. <laughs> All right, there we go. So. Did that flip it? I don't even, it's kind of hard to tell, isn't it? We should probably try and draw something. I don't know if that flipped it or not. It should have, right? Because I did that. Wish we were drawing some, oh, what am I doing? No, I didn't flip it. Because I mean, oh no, I'm in the right thing. I'm, but I'm in this stupid, I, this is the mistake I made last time. And like, it was clear that I was stupid for doing this, but anyway, whatever. Okay, there we go. Now the image has slipped because W actually makes the camera go up, which is what we expect. Okay, so that is that. Now scrolling doesn't work. I imagine that's because the scrolling is being somehow soaked up by I am GUI and maybe that GLFW event is not being propagated. Really easy to figure out if that's the case because if we go to, well, if we go to event here, um, this might be bad though, but if I, cause I'm sure I'm gonna get many events and doesn't look like I'm getting any events in editor layer, which is very strange. So all the mouse events are not happening in editor layer for some reason. That's odd. That's something that we need to investigate next time. So in summary, next time, what we're going to do is we're going to continue on with the whole doc space adventure, obviously. And we're going to basically take the I am GUI panel. We're going to make a viewport one and we're going to make that display our frame buffer for our scene. And that way we're going to be able to have like a dockable environment with panels everywhere and a viewport in the middle that you can drag off, put into another monitor, dock it wherever you want and do what you would expect with a level editor. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to hit the like button and help support the series and my channel on patreon.com forward slash the channel. Huge thank you to all of the people supporting this. Don't forget that if you do become a patron, you'll get access to weekly live streams of me developing Hazel Dev and all of the fun 3D stuff and like the editor workflows and basically stuff that eventually makes its way into this series here, as well as access to that source code and like other exclusive content. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time. Goodbye.